Go back in your mind now to the year 1804. You've been given the job of finding out whether or not a canal can be dug across the roughly 3,000 square miles of wilderness westward from the Mohawk River across central and western New York, and if so, to decide exactly where that canal should go. Remember, you're not surveying for a road. Roads can go up and down gentle rises and falls in the terrain without any difficulty at all. The water in a canal doesn't do that. Water always has to remain level. That means that every little rise or fall in the ground level, even of only a few feet, means having to cut that much deeper in high spots or filling with soil to build up low spots. So your job will be to find a route that follows a level path as much as possible. When that wasn't possible, locks, of course, could sometimes be used. All right, now you've found a place where the ground rises, and your scouting ahead shows that it continues to rise for several miles to come. Locks are going to be needed here, but wait a minute. Those locks are going to need water to work. You know you'll have water in the channel that you've already surveyed up to this point, but that water won't climb the hill you've just found. There aren't any pumps in the modern barge canal today, and there were certainly none in the original canal. You haven't solved the problem of this rise in the ground ahead until you find a source of water from above that will flow by gravity down to the fill these locks that you envision. That was the job of the original surveyors of the Erie Canal. That was why Thomas Jefferson called the project little short of madness. Not convinced yet that he was right? Remember, they didn't have topographical maps like this one back then. The instruments they used were primitive, and those instruments couldn't see through the wilderness of trees that covered most of central and western New York back then. But they did it. And when they opened the gates and the water flowed four feet deep in that 363-mile channel across New York State, Thomas Jefferson's comment suddenly seemed like a foolish thing for him to have said. But it wasn't. That's what made the Erie so amazing. It really was little short of madness.